In this video, we're going to take a look at the results of a geometry optimization calculation. In this case, I don't currently have the molecule open, so I need to open it. And I'm going to go ahead and go to Open Directory, which will allow me to view the orbitals. I saved it previously on my desktop, and in this case I'm going to open the formaldehyde underscore geom folder, which is where I saved my geometry optimization. So I just opened the directory, now I have the molecule loaded into IQMOL, and I can expand this tab to look at all the information that's here. Again, I have my files that were used. So here you can see that the calculation was done as an optimization. So the job type was changed to geometry, which sets it to be an optimization calculation. And the method was selected as B3lib. Again, I have my atoms, bonds, and surfaces, including the, please see the previous video on viewing the orbitals if you wish to do that at this point. What I want to focus on here is the geometry. So this was a geometry optimization. Now rather than having a single value for the energy, I actually have a series of values. And you'll notice that they get lower as the structure gets closer to the optimized value. So I can click on any of these, which will show me what structure it corresponds to. In this case, the optimization wasn't very severe, so it was fairly subtle. I can also double click on this geometry's heading, which will show a plot of those energies. So you can see that it definitely drops as we reach the converged point. And from here, I can also animate the geometry optimization process, which in this case, again, is not terribly exciting. So this is the result of the geometry optimization. It's very common that when you're studying a molecule, you want to use the result of one calculation in setting up another calculation. So I want to show you quickly how to do that from here. So I did a geometry optimization. If I select the last point and go to calculation, QChem setup, you'll see the previous input for the calculation. But if I hit reset, it will jump to the last point of the calculation. And now I can do whatever I want to on top of the optimized geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and do a frequency calculation. So if I select the frequency calculation, I want to do it at the same level of theory that I did my geometry optimization. So in that case, this will be B3lib. I don't need to change anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and submit. And I'll give this a new name. Now receive the notice that the job is finished, so I can go ahead and copy the results from the server. I'm going to save these again on my desktop with a new folder. In this case, I'm going to call my new folder formaldehyde frequency, and this should then be opened up automatically within IQMOL, and it is. In order to see this one, I need to make sure that it's the active molecule, so I can go ahead and select that one. And now, again, I have the surfaces tab with my orbitals, and I have the geometries. This was only at a single point, and it was at the final optimization point for my previous calculations. You can see that the energies match there, which is what we would expect if they're from the same structure. And then we also have now this frequencies tab. So the frequencies allow you to see the vibrations within the molecule. Um, you can double click on the header, which will give you basically an IR spectrum uh, or an infrared spectrum. If you want to see something closer to an experimental spectrum, you can broaden the peaks using Gaussian or Lorentzian functions. And by broadening them, you can get them to look more or less like you would expect in an infrared spectrum. You can also look at what bends and vibrations these different frequencies correspond to within the molecule. So if I double click on any individual frequency, it will show that motion. So here we see we have a bend in the carbon hydrogen. It's here, and it's a symmetric bend. You can look at the next one, it's a asymmetric bend. Here we have a different kind of bending. We have the carbon-oxygen stretching mode. 
the carbon-hydrogen symmetric stretch and then the carbon-hydrogen asymmetric stretch. So instead of double clicking, if I had instead done single clicks, it would show those different vibrational modes as vectors. So this can be helpful when you're trying to interpret the modes of stretching within a molecule.